What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Uh, today we're doing another video on this NTC14 charge controller. Uh, we're going to do a real world test so you can see how it works, um, see the software, and you know we'll put it through its paces and, and see what it can do. So I've got the actual device uh, connected to, to my laptop and as you can see I've got the software opened and I apologize I don't have any kind of screen capture software I'm evaluating some that uh, see if I can find one that I like to use but for now you're just gonna have to accept this probably poor quality video anyway um, you can see that the uh, the device is connected down here this is the uh, the MAC address uh, of, of this device and so and then this is the uh, the configuration so in this software let me see if I can find the mouse. There we are. Um, it, it comes with several different uh, configurations that you can choose from depending upon your battery chemistry. And so uh, right now it is set to lead acid. And uh, we have this battery over here. I'm pretty sure this is a gel cell uh, battery, but I'm going to look it up and make sure before we get started here. But basically you just lock in which configuration you want to use and then you so let's say we wanted to change it to a gel cell and then you click activate configuration it changes it up there at the top so that is the active configuration and then this is your your output specs but we don't have this connected yet so what I've got here I've got some uh, some leads coming off of a solar panel that I have sitting out here in the sun and the reason I've got it um, just so we can see we won't be able to see the laptop in the direct sunlight so I've got this panel sitting right here got the leads coming inside we'll connect connect that to the input side here with these MC4 connectors and then we'll connect the output side this these Anderson plugs we will connect that to the battery and then we will see over here we'll be able to see um, the different specs of, of uh, how this unit is performing. We'll also be able to pull up, it's got an oscilloscope feature, so we'll be able to see kind of the waveform and, and some of that uh, information here too. And I won't get into this on this particular video, but I did want to mention that it was, it was a feature of this device. All we're going to concern ourselves with today is just that this thing is working, and you'll be able to see kind of the output specs and all of that stuff and see how it connects. So let's go ahead and get this thing connected. Okay, so this battery is a, an AGM battery. It's not a, a gel cell. So we've got that plugged in here. Um, the active configuration is for an AGM or a flooded battery. And I do have this connected now to the solar panels, as you can see. So we are seeing a 19.8 uh, volts input voltage. It goes up to 20, just depending on the sun. Uh, just kind of floats there on open open circuit. <clears throat> and so all we need to do is we've got uh, these connectors um, connected to the terminals, and we just need to take this Anderson connector and connect it to the charge controller. Sorry for the bad camera work. Um, but anyway, that's connected now. So, we have activity now. So, as you can see, the input voltage is 19. It is under a small load. Um, we're getting 1.3 amps input. So we're only producing 25 watts, 23 watts, which is not very good. Uh, but it's probably because I don't have the solar panel angled at the sun very well. I can take care of that here in a minute. But you'll see the output power. Oops, the computer's going to sleep. <clears throat> uh, output voltage 14.4. That's the, the right voltage to charge that type of a battery. Now you'll see that this is an MPPT controller, a, a maximum power point tracking controller because it will take the excess voltage 
and convert it into more amps. As you can see, we're only getting one amp in and we're pushing 1.3 out. So that's the cool feature of, of this type of technology. And we are in an absorption state, so the battery is charging like it's supposed to. And some of the cool parts of this that you don't see on a lot of things, especially at this price point, um, we can track um, how, many, how many amp hours total that we're producing. Uh, that's the Coulomb meter. And the power meter, um, basically the same thing. It's telling us how many watt hours we've produced, which, which will translate roughly, you can translate that into kilowatt hours to compare um, you know, your, your energy consumption with your utility. Uh, the Coulomb meter it measures how, much, um, how many amp hours we've put into the battery, basically. So really useful information. Uh, like I said in the last video, this temperature uh, part may be going away in a future version of, of uh, the product. So just disregard that for now. Interestingly, we've already reached float. So, and that's, that's fine because this was fully charged before, um, before I connected it. So it didn't have to charge very much, but I'm kind of surprised it went float that fast. Anyway, um, that's pretty much the first trial test. Next time I'll, I'll test some things out with the oscilloscope. Um, we'll get into uh, connecting this uh, device to via Bluetooth to a cell phone. Uh, we'll do some of that stuff next time, but this is a good basic overview of what it can do uh, in a real world testing situation. Thanks for watching guys.